Hey everyone, my name is Dylan from Gunspot and I'm here for thearmorylife.com and in this video we're going to be talking about making a clone of the Randy Chagart Black Hawk Down M14. So we've got a lot to talk about and I want to try to keep this video as short as possible. Um, so I can't talk about everything, just know that as we're going into it, but something that I wanted to start off this video by saying um, is just like I had there at the end of the intro, just paying tribute uh, and trying to honor the memory of Randy Chagart. Randy Chagart was one of two snipers uh, that were on Overwatch for Operation Gothic Serpent in October of 1993 in the Battle of Mogadishu. So a second Black Hawk goes down, everyone is on their way to the first Black Hawk that goes down, and this one gets shot down, and they're really the only two guys who could intervene and try to make sure if there were any survivors that they had a fighting chance and they were told consistently over and over that they could not go down, they were not allowed to go down, and the men kept persisting that they were the only chance of the people on the ground and that they needed to get down there. And, and they verbally acknowledged that it's basically a one-way ticket, um, that there won't be any air support or anyone to pick them up, that if they go down there, it's two of them on their own, basically versus the entire city of Mogadishu. And these two men go down there and they, sacrificially lay down their lives fighting. Obviously that's a very heroic act by these two men, something I'm certainly, I know that I'm not capable of. Um, it is an amazing story, um, gives you chills to talk about it and think about it. If you've never watched the movie or you've never read or anything on this, go check it out. Um, that's all we can talk about here because we're gonna get into the rifle itself because this video is about creating a clone of the Black Hawk Down movie M14, um, which is obviously inspired by the real rifle that Randy Chagart would have been carrying. Uh, we don't have his actual rifle, it was never recovered, so there's some things we don't know about it, so on and so forth. I say all that just to say I can't cover everything, and in this video, the rifle that I'm going to be showing you is a clone only in aesthetic. So I did not go through and do any of the mechanical things that might have been done to his gun like glass bedding or a certain trigger or anything like that. And mine is also not going to be time period relevant. I mean, mine is going to be more like the movie and at the time they made the movie, they had different optics than at the time um, when Randy was in service. So there's going to be some different things, but if you want one that looks like the Black Hawk Down movie M14, this video is for you. So in this video, I tried to make the gun for as little money as possible and get it to look as close as possible with as little work and as little money. So here we go. 
Also, I wanted to let you know that I didn't leave out Gary Gordon. If you go over to our YouTube channel, I actually have a video that's up right now about how to build a aesthetic clone of the Gary Gordon carbine from Black Hawk Down. So you can go over there and check that out after this video. Okay, so let's get into the build. Step one, we have to be able to put a red dot on it. If you'll notice in the movie, he has a red dot on it. Now, historically at the time, it probably would have been one of the earlier aim points. In the movie, it definitely looks like an aim point pro. So that's what I ended up going with for mine. Um, because in the movie, you can tell that he mounts it with a singular 30 mil scope ring and he mounts his towards the front of the action of that gun. So the mount that I believe that he used that sets super low, because you're gonna notice that's one of the biggest giveaways of this rifle build, is that the red dot he's using sets super low. Usually optics like scopes and stuff like that are really high on aim point on M1A platforms because of the way the gun is designed. And then you have to have a cheek riser or something like that to be able to look through a scope. Well, this is a red dot, so it's got unlimited eye relief, so that's good. But we still want it to set as low as possible. So the absolute lowest mount for an M1A optic that I can find, and it only gives you a rail that's about this long, is the ARMS 18 mount. So that's what I went on ahead and put on this gun. So in order to put that on, you're going to have to drive out the pin that holds in the stripper clip. So you will slide that into the groove and then bolt down that piece and that's going to keep the tension in the back. And then the front is going to rest on the front of the receiver and then on the side of the receiver of the gun, just like we're used to seeing with M1A optic mounts, it's actually going to thread into the side of the receiver and that's going to give us a look like this. So this is my Aimpoint Pro right here that's mounted up on there and as you can see it's incredibly low over the action and that's going to give us um, the same sort of sight picture and more like a jaw chin weld that Randy Shigart has in, in the movie with his M14. So um, I put my Aimpoint Pro on here. Now in the movie it looks like to me that he has an ARMS 18 split mount. So what that would mean is it would have one or two slots that are up here at the front and one or two slots back here at the back and the part over the action is completely open. So in all reality, he probably would have had two scope rings, one back here, one right there, and it would have had an aim point, uh, one of the earlier models on it that would have taken two 30 mil scope rings. Now in the movie, he has a singular 30 mil scope ring that's on this and it's mounted up here. So it's mounted pretty far forward of the action. And I gotta admit with the ARMS 18, I was afraid that this would cause a lot of malfunctions with the ejection pattern because it's, I mean, it's right over the bolt. Um, that being said, they didn't. So uh, anyways, the ARMS 18, really solid mount so far. It's held zero. I am very pleased with it. And of course the aim point is great as well. Okay, moving on to step number two, you may have noticed that I started with the hardest thing first and when building it, that was because it was the hardest thing first. I wanted to get it out of the way and know that I was like 80% of the way there for the build because if you've got just this like that on the silhouette of an M1A, um, you're like, 80% there. So the other part that I had to do um, was I went on ahead and put on a leather sling just like him. Um, right here I've got a leather national match sling which is about a hundred bucks and put one of those on there and then really other than that all that's left is to take the gun out of the action and paint it up and as you can see I did. So I got the standard issue FDE M1A from Springfield Armory. So it was already this tan color like his in the movie and then all I did was just paint some really thin black stripes with spray paint. Um, if you look at the movie, he almost looks like he's got some double stripes like this, and there's a wider one here, and there's some really thin ones. I literally pulled up a picture and tried to paint it as exactly close as possible. Um, but they are like thinner tiger stripes that run down the M14. And so to do that, you just hold the spray paint can closer than you might normally, and do really quick swipes to get those for you. So. In order to do that, I just took off um, my foregrip up here, I took off the stock, and I took off my rubber butt pad back here just to not spray paint any of the stuff like that. His, in the movie, his optic is not painted and his action is not painted and his barrel is not painted. In reality, might his have been that way? It might have been in real life, but like I said, we don't have the M14 that Randy Shergar actually used. So this is the cheapest way that I found to build a aesthetic looking M14 just like the one that Randy Shergar had. Anyways, guys, that's my video about how to create the Black Hawk Down M14 rifle um, that looks really similar to the one out of the movie. I think it looks super close, and I'm definitely pleased with it. Um, and if you're on a budget, this is a really good way to do it. The, the most expensive part is going to be the Aimpoint Pro and the Optic Mount. Aimpoint Pro is going to be like 450 bucks. I think I got mine on eBay for $400, and then I got an ARMS 18 mount for 200 bucks, and the spray paint is like $5. And then, um, you know, of course, you've got the price of the M1A 
and everything. But oh yeah, and the National Match Sling is about a hundred bucks. Um, and I actually got an old one, so it's kind of already looks weathered and, and fits the part really well. Um, but anyways, guys, um, I wanted to do it because I have always liked this rifle. Um, it's definitely one of the most iconic ones of the movie, and in some way, as a gun YouTuber, I wanted to try to honor the memory of Randy Chigart. So that's it for this video, guys. I wanna thank you for watching, and now I do have another video that is out over the Gordon Carbine, which is the gun that Gary Gordon carried, who was the other sniper that day on Gothic Serpent, um, who lost his life alongside fighting with Randy Chigart. So that video is on our YouTube channel. It's the same thing. I'm going to show you how to build um, our build of a rifle of the Gordon Carbine, and it is a non-SBR, no-stamp gun, which his definitely would have been, um, but I'm going to show you how to do it as minimally as possible, as cheap as possible, and without any NFA stamps. So go over to the Gunspot YouTube channel and be sure to check that out. Thanks for watching this video, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.